The 24-year-old from Dawsonville, Georgia, is about to join his father, Dawsonville, in elite company. Chase Elliott is a NASCAR Cup Series champion. Welcome back to the last lap. My name is Jimmy, and Matthew is on my left. As always, we are here to bring you guys the three brand new champions in NASCAR that were crowned this weekend. Uh, each race was really exciting, and we're going to break down each one for you, and we're going to go over our predictions, see who is right, who is wrong, and we're also going to talk about the youth movement in NASCAR because there are a lot of very young drivers who are making a name for themselves. So welcome, and here we go. We are going to start off this episode by going over the results for the NASCAR Gander Outdoor Truck Series and the NASCAR Xfinity Series races. They were on Friday and Saturday night. Uh, my prediction for the truck race was Sheldon Creed, and that was also Matthew's pick. And for the Xfinity race, I picked Justin Allgaier to win the championship, and Matthew picked Chase Briscoe. So we're going to go over the results of that race. And Matthew's going to start us off. Uh, for the truck series, it was basically um, between Sheldon Creed, Brett Moffitt, Zane Smith, and Grant Anfinger. Three GMS trucks and one Thor Sport truck. So the first two stages, they were kind of, you know, quiet, like nothing really much happened. And then the uh, third stage is when it got exciting. Like Brett Moffitt was in the lead, and it looked like Brett Moffitt was getting ready to um, – get this championship but a late race caution came out which led to strategy uh two of the cars stayed out and two of the cars pitted which led to a green white checkered and it was definitely crazy as everybody was going through four almost five wide in that in that uh, front straightaway and that led to uh Sheldon Creek getting the lead on the restart starting from restarting from ninth and making his way all the way to first which led to um, Sheldon Creed becoming the 2020 Gander RV and Outdoors Truck Series champion. And then for the um, Xfinity race, it was it's almost almost quite the same as the Truck Series. Um, both both uh, stages they were kind of quiet. Like there were lead changes here and there of the final four. Um, and then once again during the late race, during the last stage, a caution comes out before um before um they took the white flag and this time it was actually won the championship four contenders chase briscoe that spun out which led to everybody grouping up and and also having another crazy restart it was basically between Algeyer and uh Cindric at this point because haley was stuck in the back and sent um, briscoe was also uh you know they just got from that last caution so it was between Cindric Allgaier and Cindric was able to was able to pass by Allgaier on the last slide, which led Austin Cindric to become the 2020 Xfinity Series champion. Yeah, it's crazy how both of those races came down to a green white checker there at the end. Uh, so for the Truck Series, Matthew and I are both correct. We both picked Sheldon Creed, and then for the Xfinity Series, neither of us were correct. I think both of us didn't really see uh, Austin Cindric really being a threat to win that race and the championship, but he did it. He surprised a lot of people, I'm pretty sure, and he was the Xfinity champion along with Sheldon Creed, who just had an incredible restart there at the end, going from ninth to first in basically one lap and then huddling off the field at the end to win that race and championship was pretty crazy. The next thing we're going to talk about is the cup race. Uh, it started off with some controversy at the beginning, and then throughout the race, it was very competitive. All four drivers were running one through four pretty much the whole race. Uh, Matthew's going to go ahead and recap for that for us. But first, our predictions were Chase Elliott for me, and then he picked Brad Keselowski to win the race and the championship. But first, I have something important that I'm going to do really quick. There we Is go. This is what we have come to here. Okay. Okay. All right, go ahead. You, you can recap the cup race now. Chase, Chase Elliott, before the race even started, actually had failed an inspection twice, which led to him starting the back of the field. Now, you would think that would 
hurt Chase's chances, but at the early of the race, Chase Elliott actually came came from the back to the front real fast in that first stage. And Joe Logano ended up winning the first stage. The whole race, it was basically Logano's fast, Keselowski was fast, but Keselowski was having pit crew pit stops issues all race long. They were having slow stops. And that's what really hurt Keselowski of uh, being a contender for this championship. Maybe even running next to Chase Elliott during that last stage if it wasn't for that those pit stops. The second stage went by. Nothing really much happened but except for the ending, which Brad Keselowski passed Chase Elliott on that last lap of the second stage, and Brad Keselowski ended up winning stage two. Then once again, Keselowski fell back from bad pit stop again, and that led to Chase Elliott basically being in front of four, the four, and um, that last stage was being pretty much dominated by Chase Elliott, even during the uh, green fly pit stops. Joe Logano did some strategy trying to get in front of Chase, but Chase and, you know, ended up passing him even after green fly pit stops. And so that basically led us to the end of the race, which Chase Elliott crossed the line, becoming your 2020 Cup Series champion. Do you have any, like, thoughts about – like Chase and getting that championship really quick? I did not expect it. I didn't expect it to come this soon. I thought it would take him a few more years to get a championship. I mean, we've seen over, especially the past few years in the Cup Series, you don't see a lot of these young guys being championship contenders. You see a lot more of the veteran drivers winning championships now or even, even getting into the Final Four. Seeing Chase Elliott getting to the championship for at 23 years old and his first try winning the championship definitely shows this youth movement. It's, slow, it's slowly but surely climbing its way up to the NASCAR ranks. Yeah, I agree with everything you said. Um, I think this win and championship basically – uh, solidifies Chase as a competitor for years and years to come because uh, the first few years of his career weren't that good, but uh, this year and the past few years, he's really turned it on, and he won more races this year than any other year, and he just did what he had to do the last few races in the playoffs, and it came down to one race, and his pit crew executed, everybody executed, and he just – Showed everybody who was boss there at the end. So the last topic we're going to be talking about on the show today is the youth movement that we've seen at NASCAR in the past few years with some of these young drivers ranking up through the truck Xfinity and Cup Series. Uh, There's a lot of them. And Matthew's going to go ahead and give his thoughts on a few of them that he thinks will be a big threat in the future. So the youth movement, like I was just saying earlier, it's starting to rise slowly, but surely. Chase Elliott just literally took that big step into and introducing the audience a new era in NASCAR. This new, no new uh, lineup of these young drivers that will soon be taking over the places of these veteran drivers or future Hall of Famers that will be retiring one day, like Kevin Harvick, Mark Truex Jr., Kyle Busch, Kirk Busch, and so many others. So... These these dri- these these young drivers they have a whole they have a whole career ahead of them like this this whole maybe possibly Hall of Fame career. Chase Silly has already taken that step. Um, Kyle Larson we'll we'll see how he does next year in the uh, the number five car for Andrew Motorsports. That'll be an interesting battle to see who will be who will be the best driver at Hendrick next year. Chase or Larson because Larson already proven himself before Chase. He had six wins, I think, seven. So he's proven himself a winner and and a possible championship contender. We'll see how he does next year. Ryan Blaney, he's been slowly – I mean, he needs to win, like, not have these one-win seasons. He needs to have multiple wins in the season to establish himself as a championship contender with Chase and Larson. There's uh, Alex Bowman. He's he's also slowly graduating to hopefully a multi multi multiple win seasons, but it's, he's still learning as he's still very young and he's he hasn't had a lot of time in good equipment, so it's still taking a little bit of time. 
William Byron, it's definitely for William Byron, it's we just don't know how he's gonna do next year with a new crew chief. He finally got that win this year, so hopefully we'll see him have a better season than he did this year. Um, Bubba Wallace is also another big question as he'll be driving Michael Jordan and Denny Hill's team. Yeah, that'll be that's really to be you know. It's one of the big the biggest name in basketball, Michael Jordan, and also a big name in NASCAR right now, Denny Hamlin. So and plus it's a Toyota with basically aligned with Jill Gibbs Racing. So it's gonna be really hyped. So we'll have to see if Bubba Wallace will be a contender next year or, and also the years to come when the new car comes out. So this whole new youth youth movement is definitely starting to shape up and making that transition to the new era of NASCAR after these veterans one day retire. I'm going to focus a little bit more on Hendrick Motorsports, uh, just since that's who I know the most about. Larson. Heading into 2021, Kyle Larson will be the oldest driver there. And he's only 28 years old. Uh, you got to think Jimmy Johnson ran until he was in his mid 40s. Chase Elliott ran until he was in, or wow, this, Jeff Gordon ran until I, he was in his 40s. And both of those drivers started out in their 20s. Like Rick Hendrick, I don't know what he is. He has a very good way of finding young talent early and progressing and maturing those drivers into veterans who win multiple championships. And I think that's what he's done right here with this lineup right here. All these drivers are in their high to mid twenties and they're already in really good equipment and performing really well. So it'll be interesting to see if, uh, how this group of drivers compare up to the uh, long-term veterans at Hendrick Motorsports like Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson and all of them. So it's definitely going to be interesting. Uh, I'm going to focus in on Chase Elliott just a little bit. Uh, so this is his fifth year in the Cup Series. And the first two to three years really weren't that good for him. I mean, he was running well, but it just seemed like he couldn't finish a race off at all. I remember two or three Michigan races where he blew a restart at the end. Uh, Dover 2017, when he got caught up with a lap car and Kyle Busch passed him, um, he just couldn't put a race 2013 together. 2013 in Mournsville. Yeah. So, but in 2018, he finally got it together. He broke through at Watkins Glen, won there, and then won a few races after that. And the same thing happened in 2019. He won three races in 2019 as well. And this year, he just hit it off and won a few races in the regular season. And then um, in the playoffs, he really turned it on, especially those last five races. Um, in the play, out of his 11 wins, he's won six of them in the playoffs. So that definitely proves that he can bring it when he needs to, uh, winning over half of his races in the playoffs. And then this year, he won three out of the last five races, including the last two to win the championship. So I think he's definitely built for this moment and the pressure. And I think he'll be a really good leader moving forward with that first championship out of these younger guys. I think he'll be a really good leader to uh, help build this organization and help lead himself and other drivers in Hendrick Motorsports to win more championships in the future. This is going to be um, an underrated topic heading into next year. Like I was saying, who will be who will be the best driver at Hendrick next year? Will it be Larson or will it be Chase Elliott? Naturally, people will say Chase Elliott because, you know, just came off the championship. But, you know, Kyle Larson, he's already proven himself a winner. And you already know he's extremely talented. But people say he was held back with Chip Ganesi equipment. Now, with Hendrick Motorsports equipment, they – they might be doing even better than that. So it would definitely be – that's going to be an underrated topic for next season heading into Daytona as who's going to prevail as the leader of Hendrick or, you know, who's going to be successful – who's going to be the most successful Hendrick driver um, next next season. The final thing we want to address really quick in this episode is that two veteran drivers uh, decided to end their career. 
uh, ending it um, on Sunday at Phoenix. The first of those being Clint Boyer. Uh, he had a really successful career. He won uh, 10 to 15 races. And I think the most fun, the best thing about him is his personality because he always brings that fun, energetic atmosphere to every race. And then uh, obviously the seven time champion, Jimmy Johnson, he definitely um, proved himself all the way through his career and had an incredible career running seven championships, five in a row, 82 weight races, I'm pretty sure. Um, and it's going to be tough to see those two go, but we're going to dive more into them on the next episode. That is all for this episode of The Last Lap. Uh, we both hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like this video, subscribe, uh, follow us on Instagram, and all of that. And we'll see you guys in the next one.